Delirium tremens is a topic, and this is often uh, abbreviated uh, DTs. And um, DTs are essentially uh, what we're talking about in this uh, video is alcohol withdrawal. And alcohol withdrawal has a series of um, uh, symptoms and presentations. And what I'm going to try to do is break it down into the four uh, stages or four types. So we have minor, we have major, we have the third uh, one that is seizures, and then you have the fourth and final one which is DTs. So let's talk a little bit about um, these four levels of severity. So if you have a patient who uh, is in a minor alcohol withdrawal, uh, he or she, usually it's about 6 to 24 hours after the last drink that uh, this will happen. And the type of symptoms include a tremor, um, anxiety, probably some nausea and vomiting, nausea and vomiting, and um, sleep disturbance as well, insomnia. The next uh, major uh, symptoms, or the next stage, usually about 10 to 72 hours after the last drink. And uh, this uh, category would involve hallucinations, either what you see or what you hear. And uh, these can be very, very uh, troublesome to the patient. Another thing that can occur is the patient can start to sweat pretty uh, severely, diaphoresis. And then you get some uh, vital sign uh, symptoms such as increased heart rate, tachycardia, and increased blood pressure as well. Now, all this is pretty severe, but it gets worse. Approximately two days after, you, the patient, if the alcohol withdrawal um, progresses, can start to develop seizures. And the fourth and final, uh, most serious one, it depends, two to three to about ten days after the last drink, can d develop DTs. Now, what are DTs? DTs, essentially delirium tremens, is essentially, as you can probably deduce from the name, delirium is a confused and uh, disoriented state. And another thing that happens uh, uh, in this stage is that you also get an increase in temperature. So but essentially what we're talking about is a fever. So those are uh, the four uh, levels of severity of alcohol withdrawal. Now, fortunately, uh, there is a treatment, and the treatment of choice is by far benzodiazepines, and the one that's most commonly used, uh, most commonly tested is lorazepam, but uh, on clinical vignettes, uh, they'll also um, uh, sometimes test you about a couple other medications. The, f the, other, the first one is uh, uh, diazepam, which uh, is a uh, brand name Valium. And then there's another one that's also very commonly tested. Librium is a brand name. It's easier to remember the brand name because the chemical name is a bit chlordiazepoxide but um, definitely remember that in addition to the benzodiazepine um, that's used there's also uh, other things that are used to manage uh, alcohol withdrawal you need to correct um, their nutritional status magnesium is used um, thymine and thymine is very important it helps prevent uh, encephalopathy and um, Usually you give uh, IV fluids to help correct the electrolyte uh, disturbances that can occur. So let's uh, jump right into some uh, questions here. Which one of the following occurs with delirium tremens but is not usually seen with less severe forms of alcohol withdrawal? Well, um, let's go through these and see which, which level of severity 
whether it was minor, major, well the third one is basically just the seizure stage, or the fourth one which is DTs. Visual hallucinations can happen in the major stage, although it can happen in any stage, but it, I guess what they're asking for in this question is what only happens in DTs and not the other stages. So it could visual hallucinations can happen in the major stage and also happen in the DT stage. Seizures, well, it's the third stage called seizures. Tachycardia, if you remember, can happen in the major stage, but it can also happen later on as well. Hypertension, elevated blood pressure, also happens in the major stage. But fever is one thing that you have to essentially wait until the patient is in full-blown delirium tremens to get uh, elevated temperature. So the answer is A. Uh, next question. 42-year-old woman is admitted for outpatient elective cosmetic surgery. After the surgery, she develops acute shortness of breath. Pulmonary embolus is diagnosed. Two days later, an emergency psychiatric consult is called as the patient has developed a shaking tremor, is pulling out her IV lines, appears to be watching snakes crawl around the floor, and ants crawling on her skin. Which of the following aspects of the patient's history would be most likely to point to the diagnosis? Well, tremor, and then what she's when she's seeing things that's uh, known as uh, visual hallucinations, and uh, these all point to essentially some of the the, the major uh, level, which is the second level of severity of alcohol withdrawal. So she's most likely has a history of alcohol use. And then the final one, fifty or Eight-year-old man is admitted to the trauma service after a motor vehicle accident that caused a fracture of his uh, pelvis and right femur. His family reports that he recently lost his job due to a poor work performance related to a worsening problem with alcohol. On the third day of his hospitalization, third post-op day after internal fixation of the femoral fracture, the patient is noted to be disoriented. He tells the nurse staff about a feeling and seeing snakes uh, crawling in the bed, what is the most appropriate initial step in the management of this patient's altered mental status? Well, this patient is going through DTs, delirium tremens, and uh, the, the most important or the treatment of choice is benzodiazepines. And the most commonly used benzodiazepine is lorazepam, which would be choice C.